Hey guys, Captain C.A. Richardson here for Flats Class YouTube. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to rig a Laztec. That's right, and we're gonna do it with the chin locks hooks. It's gonna take all the pain and frustration away. In fact, it's going to make your life a lot easier when you gotta fish those weedy zones, oystery zones, docks, mangrove roots. This is the answer. You've always been frustrated with a Laztec. How do I rig it? It's so strong and so stretchy. It's just gummy, it's tough to deal with. Well, I've got the answer. I'm gonna show you right here on my workbench. I'm even gonna take you to Southeast Louisiana and show you one of the biggest redfish that we caught last summer on this stuff. So stay tuned. Flats Class YouTube is brought to you by Aquatraction, your go-to solution for advanced marine flooring. Here at the workbench, talked a little bit about the Elastec properties that you have when you're utilizing Z-Man baits. Now, when you're using this stuff, the word Elastec separates it from normal plastisol plastics. And what I mean by that, this, these baits have more action I mean, than any standard plastic bait on the market. And a lot of that is because they're super soft, super stretchy, and, uh, and sometimes can be challenging to rig. So instead of sitting here and trying to take a hook or a jig and, and put a pilot hole in the top of the bait and all the stuff that you see on YouTube, just buy the right rigging hooks to start with and you don't have to worry about it. Now here, um, because we're gonna rig this beer run Z-Man diesels, we're going to use this chin locks. Uh, this is the 4 aught one chin locks. And I think what you're gonna find with this particular bait is it's perfect for, for, for this profile, uh, for the five inch jerk shads and several others uh, in the lineup. If you're looking to rig something smaller, like the swimming trout trick or maybe the jerk shrimps uh, you're going to probably use something in the three aught or sometimes even if you're using something really skinny like the trout trick even the two aught now most of the baits that i'm throwing i'm using the eighth ounce size for weight and the advantage to texas rigging to start with is the fact that it gives you a vertical fall and keeps the bait even instead of weight head first weighting which gives you a nice long cast but you're always fighting to keep that bait up and you don't have to do that when you texas rig so to rig this bait that is so problematic with other hook styles if you're using a a chin locks it's this easy what i like to do is go into the head of the bait about to the barb of the hook so i'll go directly into the bait like that to about the top of the barb of the hook and then i'll rotate it through the chin that simple nice and square because this material is so stretchy you can slide it over that weight and it will not break the head up like it does with typical harder plastics so I just slide it right over that, that keel weight all the way up to this little node here. Now what's nice about that node is as soon as you get over the top of it, it locks that bait in. See how it rides right there? It's right on there. Now all I'm going to do is tie a little loop knot or sometimes a clench knot to the hook eye. But I just lay the bait inside the belly so it's like so, very natural. They've got two fins on the top of the, the diesel minnows where you're going to push this straight through. So instead of trying to guess exactly where it is and hold your thumb like you've done in the past, just set it in the slot and gently push down to feel the hook point and work it through. It sits right between the fins and it's perfectly rigged every doggone time. I mean, easy peasy. Bait can't come off the hook 
I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it. It won't come off. It does not slide down. It's perfectly rigged. When you do the rigging with the chin lock series and the Elastec baits from Z-Man, you only need one bait all day long. You're not going to tear this bait up. I mean, this one beer run will last all day and it'll hold up fish after fish after fish. And what I mean by that is I'm going to send you to a video where we were fishing with this exact setup. This hook, this bait in Southeast Louisiana, I was fishing with uh, my buddy Mike and David out there. They're clients of mine, but they're also good friends. And we were catching monster fish on these baits and we used one bait all day long. So while I set up the next segment, I want you to watch this little video. Coming right to you. Nope. Mike, you might time it just right. He's right there in front of Mike's bait. You're ahead of him, Mike. He's down a little bit, but he's right there. You can still see him. Mike, bring it right. There you go. Come on, a little farther. Drop it. Got to see it. He's tipping on it. Oh, oh, not good time for that. He got it. No? Nice! <laughs> oh, dude, it's a redfish. It is a giant redfish. Holy crap, that's a submarine. I thought it was a damn black drum. That net's not going to be big enough, I'm telling you right now. We're going to have to get some grippers out. <laughs> Holy cow. What is that dinosaur doing in here? Lord mighty. You're peeking early, Monkey Mike. You are peeking early, dog. <laughs> you are peeking way early. You just, yeah, this is gonna be a four foot fish almost. It's. Should we try to get his head? Yeah, get, try, try to, yeah. Thing's got a mouth like a, you could probably drop a bowling ball in it. Mr. Stutes, I think, I think Mike's on you now. <laughs> Look at the tail on this thing. Oh, I know, and just as soon as I saw him flex, I'm gonna put the power pole down here. I'm gonna jump down. All right, be ready to lift his head just enough. Nice move there, Mike. Nice move, although that, that salad may get him tangled up. Easy to deal with. Keep the rod low. There you go. Flip them over. That's what you want. Right there. Now you got control over and you're bringing them back. It's almost like fighting a tarpon. Bring them back right a little bit. There you go. Lift his head just enough. Dave's got his camo shirt on, Mr. Stutes. Monkey Mike is on the rod today. I know, it's like trying to put 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag. Reel down so you're close to the water. There you go. You get too high, you can't do nothing with them. It's just a reflex. It's gonna happen, be patient. It's gonna happen. There we go, we got the head, we got the a third of them in. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Show us that net. Look at this. Unbelievable. Let's go down and take a closer look. Pretty cool video, huh? Seeing a redfish of that caliber 
I mean, that is something to behold. One of the biggest redfish that have ever come alongside my boat while fishing a shallow pond. That's not out there fishing the big water where you see the big brood schools. This was one single rogue fish swimming in a pond that had about 18 to 20 inches of water in it, and that is it. And Mike put the wood to him uh, on some tackle that was better suited to catch fish in that six to 10 pound class, but ended up having to, to subdue that giant of the marsh um, with one of these baits. And that brings me to this. Here I've set up three different gap sizes so you can have an idea of the versatility. If you're, you've got a really narrow body bait, these two high, high strength hooks work really good. There's plenty of hook gap there for when the fish bites down on the bait. You've got plenty of room there to get a great hook set. There's a little hook slot in the back of these little swimming trout tricks. I love using these baits um, for sight fishing. They land light on the water and that size hook is ideal. So if you're going to use um, some of the smaller profiles, that little two-aught hook is going to be fantastic. Uh, you see me do a lot of videos on the Z-Man Jerk Shrimps or the EZ Shrimps. Well, the three-aught one-twelfth of an ounce, because you're trying to move this bait slower and let it have more of a natural fall instead of swimming it like you do with the trout trick or the diesel minnow. This is an excellent size. So one twelfth ounce size in the three aught works fantastic on those shrimp baits. And then probably the most versatile where you can use the bigger baits when you're really power fishing would have to be this one eighth four aught high strength hook. Uh, and when I say high strength, these are mustad quality, good, strong hooks in here. So I'm going to take one out. I mean, they do not flex. Uh, if they did, we would have lost that fish. I mean, these things, I'm bending as hard as I can, and these things will not give. Super sharp points, as you can see. Very well made. Um, I wouldn't chintz on this. This is something that has really worked for me. You'll notice a lot with the chin locks hooks, instead of having this weight further forward on the shaft, which gives it a downward fall, they put it back in the bait. And this gives this a really natural wobble down and keeps the bait horizontal, which is really important, especially with the shrimp style bait, super important. So I actually love this hook. They came out with this about two seasons ago. And ever since they have, it's the only hook I use for Texas rigging um, th the fish, you know, in, in grassy zones or oyster zones or skipping docks. And you can always text pose these baits where you, you slide the plastic a little forward and then snap it back over the hook to make them even more weedless to work them in super, super weedy areas. Now, you want to know how big that redfish was and how well this hook really withstood the battle that that Mike put to it. Catch this next little piece of video where we tell you exactly how big that fish was and then we'll come back with a close. All right, this this fish here is 46 and a half inches long and 27 and a quarter around. That is a beast that a dinosaur, <laughs> monkey mike takes the 2020 record i'm saying it right now no <laughs> one's close no one is close at all good pictures dave the whole thing oh yeah let's do a release i hope you like what you saw there because that was a wide body redfish i mean i have to give it to mike to catch a fish like that in a pond that only has a foot and a half of water, well, that's a lot different than trying to catch one out in the wide open when you're in those big brood schools. That was a true anomaly back there. If you like what you're seeing here at Flats Class YouTube and we're teaching you some good stuff that's putting more fish in your boat, give us a thumbs up. We really want to we want to have you subscribe to the channel. We want you to tell your fishing buddies. It's my job to make you a better angler. And hopefully, this little tip on the chin locks does it for you because I'll tell you what, there's so many frustrating emails I get about how do you rig the Elastec baits from Z-Man. And I'm telling you right now, if you've got the right rigging tools, it's a snap and the stuff is so strong, so resilient, so lifelike, you'll never want to use another plastic bait ever again. Only Z-Man, I promise. Uh, if you're looking for some of the materials that I showed you today between the chin locks hooks or any of the baits that I showed you, you can pick them up at SodiumUSA.com. That's an online retailer that will 
pretty much have everything I talk about. That's a partner of ours for the last two years and they've done a fantastic job of stocking stuff that we use at Flats Class TV. Until next time, Captain C.A. Richardson signing off. I've got to go fishing.